the arena is quiet for now. But contestants Marty and Scarlet could be walking into an ambush. Watch an ambush! <laughs> They're surrounded! Wakey, wakey! Let's rock! Surprise, uh, motherfucker! Uh, and you want some, too? I got plenty. Now that's using your head! <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. And that's no way to treat a lady! It's no rules and no mercy on Homicidal All-Stars! But wait, who's that entering the arena? It's Ulysses, the reigning champion! Let's heat things up. No matter where in the world you are joining us from, we proudly welcome you to another live stream on Twitch for the upcoming excellence, explosion, electrifying experience we like to call Homicidal All-Stars, coming soon to Steam and GOG. Hey everybody, I'm Johnny LaQuasto. I am the voice of play-by-play -play announcer Joe Stern in Homicidal All-Stars. And today, very lucky to be joined by a game designer at Artificer Games. That means he's been involved from start to finish. It's a very exciting time right now as this game is approaching release. Matt J. Krasinski, how are you feeling today, my friend? Um, well, feeling well. Um, glad to be here tonight with you. Um, well, apart of being a little bit stressed, I'm feeling really pumped just to show you a little, a little bit more about exploration in the game, uh, about cooperational puzzles. Um, well, and whatever that awaits you in the exploration part of the game. Uh, exactly. So we're, we're going to get into some of the extras that people are surprised by, the traps and the puzzles. Yes, it's tactical, it's combat, but there's also a psychological aspect to it as well. But uh, first off, I'm interested, and I think you know anyone watching this is, how, what's your mindset right now? Because, I mean, this has been a, a multi-year process, about three years from what I've been told, from start to finish, and you've been involved for quite some time. So how are you feeling right now as we're still trying to figure out, uh, you know, step-by-step -step process to, you know, the, the game being released? Uh, well, right now, uh, I'm just relaxed, I think. Well, you know, it's, um, it's really stressful while you're developing it. Um, right now, I cannot say that um, it's, um, <laughs> it's difficult. I think that I'm just uh, can't wait. I'm looking forward to the time this game uh, releases so that I can see people actually be playing it. And I hope that people are waiting for it because uh, there is something to wait for. Definitely. Now, I know every one of you have uh, on the team, you've played it from start to finish. You have all defeated the game. What kind of joy do you have? playing the game even though the fact you kind of you designed it so you know everything about it but how much fun is it for you to actually see the the fruits of your labor uh, well I designed the exploration part mostly so every time I play tactical levels then I have still plenty of fun because I don't know all the details about those levels of course I play them I know them pretty much but um, that's one thing that I didn't actually implement all of those levels that makes it a little bit fun for me as well as um, well you know the enemies are kind of AI things that you cannot always rely on what what, what are they supposed to do what they, they are doing at the moment so there is always a this tiny bit of um, um, kind of um, unexpectedness in their behavior so that's that's one thing and the other part is that well you know when I when I was developing those levels I only saw boxes I only saw some ideas logical things and uh, I didn't actually got to enjoy all those levels with all this beautiful stuff going around in here like um, once I'm done with the level it's still kind of blocky and artists go in and they really you know turn the plays around and it's, it starts looking really good. 
which kind of leads us into what we're talking about today. You mentioned being surprised. Well, that includes traps, puzzles, as part of the combat. So today, explain what are we going to do? We're going to go through maybe a, a level or, quote, episode or two uh, discussing the traps in the different tactical areas. Uh, is that kind of where we're at today? Um, well, today we're picking up where Jan left uh, the last time. So we are mm -hmm. right after the shop's uh, tactical level where you get the warden, uh, the robot mechanical beast of a machine that is designed just to, you know, uh, bring pure joy to the people's lives. And uh, right, <laughs> and right now, uh, we are picking up uh, where he left off. So we are uh, entering the metro station level where you have to get through, um, well, to the last arena. Sorry, I just got kind of lost in my yeah. thought right there. Uh, no problem. But um, uh, but along there are some cooperational puzzles that I wanted to show you because. Um, well, at the, as the game progresses, it's kind of picking up its pace and you really get to, get to see some more intricate levels, more, more intricate puzzles and stuff like that. Right, and we did meet Warden last week in the Metro Central Station, which for those counting at home, that would be episode four in the game. So uh, whenever you're ready, let's take it away from there. Metro, very descriptive, a lot of fire, a lot of destruction. No longer a functional metro station, which makes it uh, a little more unpredictable. Oh, exactly. And, um, well, to just like the first thing that we uh, see here, um, there's a loot box here. But actually, this um, this is just a trap. And this is just to show you um, what, kind, what kind of things you can expect in the exploration levels here. That uh, the game isn't always, well... It doesn't always present itself as fair to you, although it is fair that you're supposed to feel kind of mm, mm, endangered, uh, well, if that's the right word for it. And right now we're uh, entering a cooperational puzzle area, and I have to deal with this trap here, uh, which is completely different from the other traps we were um, seeing last time while playing the... Uh, what was it? The old district quarter, right? This is old right. quarter level where there was this morbid city. Yeah, so here it's um, it's um, more complex. You have to really listen to the tunes, see the pattern, and and strike where it's green. Well, if you fail to do so, then you get a bomb at your face. Of course, and as we mentioned last week, as we saw, one of the main goals of getting through the Metro Central Station is to obtain the Warden, which is a state-of-the-art combat mech designed by the engineers at Omega Corporation. And, of course, Omega Corp, they're behind this entire television show inside of this video game. Oh, yeah, they are. And this is the reason you see all those traps here, because, well, nobody designs the Metro Station with all those spiky traps there. <laughs> so everything you see in those levels is kind of like thrown into by the Omega Corporation or by the producers of the show or, well, maybe their joint effort. And um, here we have a cooperational puzzle that consists of a, a matrix, matrix, you can, you can call it that, of, well, seemingly just floor tiles, which are obviously something else, because when you step into it, it might just... Uh, will hurt you. So what you're supposed to do, you you have to use both of your um, both of your characters to to safely get to the reward box. Exactly. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, so we are. And you're playing with Scarlet and Tybalt right now, teaming up and. Once again, the uh, the LED screens, uh, just as an added effect, uh, the random ads that are going across while you're trying to survive just makes it so much more fun to, to kind of keep your eyes on. It kind of feels like a show, doesn't it? It really does. Um, and that's another thing I, that I love about this game is you will, as you, from what I remember, you're getting through different levels. You will see cameras. You will see the lighting because people are watching you try to survive all across the world live on television. Uh, yeah, that's... Um... That's gruesome, that's really brutal, brutal if you ask me, uh, but, um, well, that's what it is when you want to get your fans, you know, sticked and hooked to the TV, TVs or whatever they are watching, you know, those televised <laughs> programs 
on like in the future which the game is set in uh, okay here we have a guy we can we can sign an autograph for him yep those are some fans that are very rabid fans I will say with their glow sticks <laughs> cheering people on and yeah you're gonna hear random guys and girls yelling at you asking for certain things I believe you might hear my voice in disguise a couple of times as, yes, as someone do, yes. screaming out at you, which I'm very, uh, very excited about that as well. Yeah, last time I, I remember specifically that I told you that I always picked the nice option. So let's just mm -hmm. try something else so that I don't know. Yep. That's another part that, uh, well, well, what you asked me before that, uh, is there some enjoyment in playing a game that you already know? Well, there is, because you have a certain way of playing, so just um, sometimes throw something different into the game and just play a different way than you play normally, and then you have a little bit of a surprise always, uh, even if you're the developer. And I would imagine there had to be at least a few members of the team in developing this game you know, who received some kind of inspiration from different movies over the years. Because we we have seen kind of these dystopian, futuristic movies, whether it be Demolition Man or that that's just one that came to my mind. I would imagine there's a little bit of uh, inspiration from different films as well. Oh, exactly. Actually, when it comes to this um, ex exploration, the films that inspired me, well, were not exactly the films that inspired the mood of the game because well the mood is what we were discussing previously which is the running man and and mm. um well just, just read maybe also the death race 2000 and stuff like that but when it comes wow. to the traps uh there's um you know there are those movies where you have traps in them like resident evil and lasers, I don't know if you remember those, because um, yes. there's, a, there's a bunch of Resident Evil movies which are, well, of a particular quality, but uh, <laughs> the, there are some traps in there uh, that, you can, uh, that you can spot, that you can uh, really um, see, sorry, and uh, I try to kind of uh, inspire our game by that. Um, it's really difficult to focus on what I'm doing here in the game and just still talking so sorry if I just said something right. <laughs> silly. <laughs> no and... worries. You pay attention, I will talk, and then whenever you're ready to talk again. There's the Warden Thank right you. now for those playing at home. That is the combat mech we spoke about. The Warden joins the game uh, during the fourth episode if you can get that far and if you can uh, essentially free the Warden. He's unlike any other playable character in the game. There are seven playable characters. Uh, the Warden, he's a flat-out destructive machine. Not very fast-moving, but he's also very difficult to destroy. So he's a, a good exactly. teammate to have on your side if you're Scarlet, if you're Tybalt, if you're any other uh, playable character. Exactly, and uh, that's exactly why I did uh, equip him with this uh, extra speed ability, because, well, he, he kind of sucks at movement, uh, to be honest, uh, at least to my view. Uh, so uh, that's why I always try to invest in movement for him. Um, but yeah, uh, he is kind of a tankish character. Well, he is a tank. Um, okay, so we we've, we've got everything ready and everything is set, I believe. And we have no implants for for the warden. Oh, he's he's been just unlocked. So uh, let's enter the arena. There we go. Entering the metro station. This is episode four of the. Deadliest game show in history, Homicidal All-Stars. Uh, this is a, uh, you know, picture yourself in the late 21st century. The world's even more messed up than it currently is, if you could even imagine that. And uh, this is our society right now. And these uh, random characters who all have a deep past history, uh, a lot of personal issues, they are all thrust into this game show trying to fight for survival, with Scarlet being the heroine of the entire, uh, the entire show slash game. Um, well, um, I, I, I couldn't say it better, so let's just start with the level here, and uh, let me maybe just use Tibble for starters, and, and body swap some character, yep, so let, uh, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with Tibble and his trickery, mm -hmm. and what we just did is we just swapped the body so that enemies perceive the other guy as uh, as hostile so well 
he just he will just, they will just uh, leave Tybalt and they yep. won't bother him. Uh, so let's use Warden here. As... Little description of Tybalt. Uh, Tybalt's a master of disguise, hacker extraordinaire. Uh, excels at confusing opponents, sabotaging their gear. So he's got all types of abilities like doing body swaps, uh, sabotage. Um, we mentioned the hacks. He's a decoy. So yeah, he's got a lot going on in the uh, stylist chat as well. He's got some sweet pants and doesn't believe in buttons. <laughs> all right. Uh, we got everything here. 80% chance. That's, that's all right. Yep. I've just used the Sold ability, which is uh, the ability that allows you to use both of your ac uh, action points and still shoot at the end of your movement, so this is really helpful. Well, at certain, uh, at certain points you really want to move your character to a specific location, but still, well, shoot to, you know, to have the upper hand or whatever, and this really comes in handy. Okay, and that's what I wanted to the game to be right now. The enemy is shooting at one of the enemies, so I don't really have to worry about uh, this guy right now because Ronin is uh, really kind of a you know pain in the ass sometimes when uh, he just attacks you from up close. Uh, okay, so what, what can we do? Well, we can actually use Warden as a cover, so let me just extend this cover here and uh, well, maybe shoot at the guy. And throughout the game, you're going to see a lot of Ronins, a lot of scum. We did briefly see a drone monk as well. And those are, uh, you know, very intriguing. They're minimal risk, but they're able to spawn armored attack drones. And so they could be uh, definitely a nemesis throughout the game. Uh, exactly. Well, you always have to count those other enemies as um, yet another enemy that takes their turn. So you have to wait, which is pretty annoying, so you, so you just want to get rid of them as fast as you can. Uh, and that's what I'm doing right now, and which is um, pretty, um, pretty easy to get rid of those drones at the beginning, but I believe they get stronger. Um, or at least the enemies that, that surround them get stronger, and you <laughs> have to pay attention to them as well. Uh, Alright, so let's just move Tibble here, and well, we don't really have to do anything with Tibble, so let's position him here, because he won't be attacked. And for people wondering, Matche, like, as you play, you kind of switch back and forth between, say, uh, Scarlet and Tibble, for example. And I've almost lost Scarlet, well, which is bad. Alright, mm -hmm. let's just use Madkit on us. No, no, no. Maybe something better. Uh... Yep. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I really love those. Um, not only kill camps, but those dismemberments. Oof. Oh, they are... They yeah, are... you're going to see a lot of dismemberments as you play <laughs> Homicidal All-Stars, so exactly. get ready. Um, okay, so... Let's just try to attack the drone monk, which is pretty. Uh, the, the the pretty cool thing is that when you attack the drone monk, his spawn will die along him. So, well, you wow. don't really okay. have to worry about those drones as long as you can get to this guy, which, which is what we are trying to do. And actually, we have this drone shield because uh, previously he thought we were Ronin, so he gave us this bonus, this buff, which is great. Uh, but well, and that's one of the benefits of Tybalt, is he can, you know, do body swaps and be a decoy, so he can look like a Ronin, or look like a Drone Monk, and then essentially fool, uh, you know, the opponents. Exactly. Alright, unheadable, yeah, whatever. Oh, damn. What should I do? What should I do? Uh, why does she have just one ability point? Did I spend it? Oh, I... Okay, um... And, as he promised, the drone's dead as well. Which is a double kill, double down. Triple kill, damn. Um, alright. I, I have a feeling that we should 
hide because well Scarlet is out in the open. So was Tibble this. Great. Once again, this is episode four in the metro station, and the trains are still running, so you also have to dodge trains amongst the Ronins and the attack drones and everything else. Yep. So this is kind of like a trap inside a tactical level, because, well, there are not always... Uh, there's, there's not only the enemies, there's always those neutral elements that will kill both the enemies and you, so <laughs> you really have to pay attention to everything is everything around. Okay, I think that Scarlet could really use a healing station. And I think we are safe here in the middle, as long as we are not standing directly on the tracks. And, um, alright, let's move and here. And how, how difficult is it to find a healing station? Are there, I would imagine there aren't that many healing stations throughout the levels. Well, as a segue to what you said previously, um, those, are, uh, those are also scattered around as a kind of, uh, you know, a courtesy of Omega Corporation just to keep the show going so they are not that often and it's kind of kind of depends on, on the difficulty level of a tactical level well I kind of hate that but the word tactical it's, it's an adjective but we use it as a noun because you know it, when, when you develop a game like this you really have to make <laughs> uh, you, you got your own lingo right of course mm. Nitro to the Metro. Okay, so apparently we have also those barrels here. Uh, let's just let's just uh, bolt from here. I don't want I don't want to stand in the middle while those trains are going. And I didn't want to admit that, but as you as you might see right now, I'm kind of surprised by that because it's been so long mm -hmm. since I last played this level that I really have fun and I really I'm. I'm honestly not expecting those things. Like, they are surprising me. Right. Uh, which is great. Which well, is... From, from from what I was told from Steam Fest just a couple of weeks ago, people were, you know, pleasantly surprised at how much variety there was and how many surprises there were uh, during the demo. And the demo is still live for anyone who does want to. Yeah, that's kind of what we wanted to have in the game. That um, there is lots of different experiences. Uh, that you don't really uh, stick to one idea and reiterate it all and on and on so so it gets boring uh, so this is why we decided to um, make the game you know kind of um, fresh all the time if, if there even if there, if there even is such a thing like that okay so uh, yeah. let me just think for a moment because right now we are expecting those uh, those doors to open and enemies will swoop in so I have to position my guys well there goes the express. once again you have Tybalt you have Scarlet uh, there's also other playable characters which we have seen uh, we've already seen the warden as well uh, I imagine we're going to see a few more. There's Marty is a big yep. uh, kind of father figure um, to Scarlet. Very interesting backstory there. At some point, you'll also might see Zoe as well as Marcus and Phantom. So very unique, uh, diverse set of characters. That's for sure. Um, exactly. Oh, well, wait a second. Hmm, I could really... Well, maybe that's a good idea that I... Uh, that I just... Uh, went to the other side of the station because there are those barrels and they, they could just eliminate me. Uh, what I really love about those, um, you know, surprising moments like the barrels is that they can, you know, they can be your blessing but they also be your demise. When you just stand near the barrel and the enemy spots it, then they will just pop it. They will blow it and it's... Um, <laughs> It, then it's your bad. All oh, right, drone is. Oh, but I should really aim at drone monk. Oh, I, sc I screwed it there. Yeah. Well, maybe just uh, let's body swap him. And is there anything specific that you're looking for at this moment, or is it just a matter of uh, slowly and safely making your way 
through the, the metro station? Uh, well, right now I could uh, use the warden to, to, to blow those barrels up, but... Um, are you asking me about this tactical level or about the... Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, I'm just trying to live. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, okay, I think. Yep, we can get. Oh, we can do it. Oh, but we still have to reload. Okay. That was great. Okay. So for those joining us right now, Matche is playing with Scarlet, Tybalt, and the Warden. This is the, quote, fourth episode of Hamasada All-Stars, the deadliest game in history as far as being. It's it's a live game show where people are fighting for survival. Picture Hunger Games in a, uh, like you mentioned, Running Man, Demolition Man environment. It's complete chaos, and it's very, very fun. The visuals right there, you just see the, the fire and then the, the, the devilish-looking statues there right above it. This is all part of what used to be a functioning metro station. Here we go. I love the close-ups here. Ooh, oh, yep. look out. That's great. And the enemies just did my job, which is, oh, well, that's great. <laughs> wow. Okay. And that's one of the intelligent things about this game is, yes, you see everything from this angle, but you never know when you're going to get an amazing close-up of the action, and then you feel like you're right there, especially when a character gets introduced. Those are really great. Okay, so... Where are you right now? So what should we do? There is this drone mug that I really want to get rid of right now, but I'm mm. not, not sure how to get to him. And I also don't have ammunition, so I, sh I have to reload. Oh, well, wh what to do? So many choices, that's great. Um, hmm. This guy is 93% of chance to attack. Oh, but I still have the Berserker. Okay. So. It's kind of silly what I'm doing right now, but... Oh, it worked! Okay. I did not expect that. <laughs> I really I really went for just hurting Ooh. him hurting him a little. And then finishing him off with, with Scarlet uh, with the Berserk ability so that she recovers one AP and then I go further just to... Um, just to, you know, uh, chain, chain attack, more enemies in one turn. Okay, um, we still have the Assault ability. And of course that was fun to see, uh, the announcer's <laughs> words there. And he finishes them off! I definitely remember saying that many times throughout the game. Oh yeah, I forgot to to, to, to target this guy. Um, I'm just really trying to, you know, um, wrap up my game just to get to the uh, to the puzzle that I want to show you. Um, but I also am having quite a lot of fun right now. So <laughs> okay, and bye bye Ronin. Back -to -back kills for the challenger. And the warden. Decimates the Ronin. My God, that is vivid. Okay. And here comes the drone shield. No. Oh. Oof. For a second, I thought I'm gonna lose Tibble. And that is why your mom told you not to play on the train tracks. Okay. My mom never told me that. <laughs> uh, okay. Mm hmm. I don't have snap right now. Well, I really wish Scarlet was leveled up so I could really chain those attacks and I could just, you know, decimate all those two guys in a blink of an eye. But now I, I right. well, I have to think. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's just. Um... Oh. And I have a method. As far as the stream today, you know, we mentioned uh, obviously it's a tactical combat game, but there's also plenty of puzzles and traps. There's a psychological element element to it, and that's why we're uh, showing all this stuff today, just to like get even more excited for the eventual release of Homicidal All Stars. Okay, and he sheathed his sword. That's great. Uh, what I just did, I just used um, sabotage ability. Um, on 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 Ronin so that he 
um, sheaths his sword. Is that a right word for it? Uh, and um, I just, um, well, made sure that he won't attack me in his turn. Okay. Uh, well, oh yeah, I have one point. So I gotta take my chances. Headbutt. Oh, another close-up, and the Warden once again just decapitates a Ronin, and not to mention uh, takes out the right leg. All right. Uh, well, right now I really hope I'm really hoping that I can do something about those guys here. Um, Tibble. Well, we have a, uh, oh. we have a question in the in the live chat about killer clowns. Not sure what that question is, but hey, toss it out at us. Hmm. Sounds cool. <coughs> I don't know if there are any killer clowns here. Although maybe those two clowns that I'm trying to kill right now. Uh, killer clowns might be the only thing that's not in this game, actually. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be so sure. I, I'm <laughs> definitely sure there is something related to a clown in the game, but... Mm, all right. Uh, at, least, at least visually, but okay, um, let's just stick to Ronan yeah. right now. Uh, what am I supposed to do to him? Uh, I just want to shoot him. Maybe kill him. All right, wait, let's see. No. Hmm. Will this work? Two for one. That's great. A destructive volley. Okay. And he blows the shot. Oh, that's great. Almost down there. Uh, oh. And we have Tibble. Moving along here with Tybalt, Scarlet, and the Warden in the Metro Station. This is Episode 4, or aka Level 4, if you want to say, uh, on Homicidal All-Stars. And there are a number of different episodes in the show, nine in all. So there is a, it's not an easy game to get through. It's going to take some time. And right now, what I'm doing is I'm just chaining this <clears throat> melee kill here. And we've recovered one AP for this kill, and when I'm supposed... Oh yeah, just let's kill the other guy. And this is exactly why I threw the grenade in, so that they had low HP and I could eliminate both of them. And that's it. We are past the level. As you just saw, Scarlet, not afraid to uh, do hand-to-hand -hand combat either. Oh, she's really, well, excellent at that. And she excels at this strategy, I believe. All right, so we have ratings and battle highlights. I always love to scroll through those. Right now we don't have that much of them, but actually when you are reach certain points of the game, there is lots and lots of those um, battle highlights, which are just uh, special um, parades. I don't know the, the right word. That you just get them for doing those, you know, extremely graphic stuff with enemies. All right, let's continue. And for those asking in live chat, this game is going to be on Steam and GOG. So you can wishlist it right now. So you know when the game does drop, you can receive it. So Steam and GOG, Homicidal All-Stars. You can find it on Facebook. You can find it on Twitter. Um, and you can get every possible update as the release date approaches. But right now, we're playing a little bit of a demo action. You could also play the demo right now for everyone in live chat who's wondering. You could also find the demo, play that. And just, uh, you know, spread the good word. Get more friends involved. Everyone wishlist it. The more people that wishlist this game, the quicker the release may be. And also, uh, the more noise the game is going to make. It's already mentioned uh, in multiple articles as a top 10 upcoming game that more people need to know about. So that's very exciting. All right. So we've just bought a new weapon for Warden. Uh Okay, and I think we are good to go. Yeah, we, we are. And just frag grenade him. Okay. Yep, and we are past the level. Now we are back in the exploration. This is the basic, uh, you know, mm, basic way the game... Uh, is, oh, sorry, it's basically the way the game uh, shows the stuff and uh, shows its cards. Right now we have another fan that wants an autograph. And it's for a grandma. Look, grandma's got to watch some uh, <laughs> insane action as well. You know, mm -hmm. get get the old lady an autograph. Why not? Uh, I, I, I 
Well, I couldn't imagine my grandma watching such a show, but... Oh, well, I can imagine that in the future, maybe. And there's yet another thing that you asked me before, like, uh, is there something that might surprise you? Is there something that you might really find enjoyable in a game that you've been working on? The texts, the things that you say in the game, um, well, I don't know all of them, so every step of the way I got to play test the levels, I really got to hear those texts, so it was kind of enjoyable. Each new update that Olga made made my day sometimes really because yes. I got to you know see or hear new things. Okay, Abuela. I think it's kind of a good nana name, right? Abuela. <laughs> yeah, Abuela is, is beautiful. And yes, it was great working with Olga and Evan. Uh, I recorded I've said this before, I over twenty hours of content doing the play by play of this game. And part of the reason that took so long is because they wanted to make sure there were so many different options of me calling the action. You're not gonna hear, like I remember when I would, uh, when I was younger, I would play the video games, like whether it be the pro wrestling games or the sports games, the play-by-play -play commentators would often say the same thing over and over and over throughout the game. Toward this, there are a lot of different options that you're gonna hear. And that's why it was so exciting for me to be a part of it. Cause I was calling this action without ever seeing the gameplay. So now for me to be able to sit here with you, watch you go through this, it's really neat. Uh -huh. Well, thank you for that. And, and there is this thing that I wanted to tell you uh, something about, because uh, here are some flame traps, you can see them. Um, here just, uh, well, blowing in an interval. And uh, there is a funny story to that, because um, previously those traps had those fires, little fires that f f uh, foreshadow the, the flame coming up. Um, they were just shooting straight out of the, out of the muzzle. And our VFX artist was really crazy that the flame doesn't act this way. To, you know, it's it's it always points you know upwards. Just this is how the physics works. Uh, physics works. So um, he just really um, made them shoot upwards. And my point here is that we have really great VFX artists that takes care of all those bloody gore stuff that you can see in a game. He he really nailed that part. Um, yes, and more and more flames up ahead. <laughs> That's I think my favorite part as a viewer is watching you know different members of the team play through these levels and the detail Perfect. is incredible. So explain. So we got through the metro station. So essentially we moved on to quote. Would you say the next episode, the next level, or it's kind of synonymous, I guess. Uh, well. What I call a level is just this metro station that we get through and when you get out of the tactical level you get to see the next part of the same level and you advance through it until you reach the final arena and then you finish and go back to Cobra. So we're still on metro, we're still playing this, uh, this metro station hellish nightmare trap and right now we've just acquired another loot box. There we go, loot boxes all over the place, gotta get them when you can! Also got to watch out for all the traps. For the traps and ambushes. Well, um, that's another part of the game that, well, can kind of throw you off track. Because uh, you're not supposed to feel really, you know, warm and safe in this world. So sometimes, from time to time, the game really uh, throws rocks at you. If <laughs> And uh, it's, uh, it's something that's supposed to make you feel uncomfortable a little bit. But those ambushes, they are supposed to be not that difficult, just to sure. you know stop you for a second. So as you can see, those two guys, they're gonna be obliterated. Mm -hmm. um, well, so the first thing that I'm gonna do here, well, I'm gonna see if the sabotage will work on him. That weapon's useless and smoke screen disabled, so he's useless at this point, so I can shoot him. Oh, that's a fume right there. That's one of the many different villains that you'll uh, come across in this game. That's my first time seeing a fume. Exactly. And this this okay. this uh this went like kind of a puzzle. You see what I did here? <laughs> well, I'm really amazed. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, I I wasn't even supposed to be this good. <laughs> um, there you go. All right, and let's just finish this guy here. So maybe assault ability. 
And fumes are one of the villains that are surrounded by smoke. They obscure everyone's line of sight except their own. So, you know, they're they're dangerous in that way because smoke screens are never easy to deal with. So you got to look out when you see uh, the fumes for sure. Exactly. And another close-up. Okay, so as you could see, we dealt with those guys in two turns. Well, if I had a little bit more luck, then maybe we could do it in one turn, but it would be awesome. So let's not, you know... Um, exaggerate in this regard, and we are back at the metro station. Okay, the good old safe metro station. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, so no need for that. As you could see, uh, Tibble got some damage uh, during the fight, but Scarlet got none. So we don't we don't have to heal him. You know, we didn't want to burden the player with remembering, oh, Tibble got hurt, so I should, you know, heal him. No, it's it's uh, the game really takes care of the companions. You don't have to worry about them, and you just have to worry about your character specifically, and it all be f and and it all will be fine. Okay, so here, hardcore security system. Okay, mm. and I just got hit. So maybe that's the reason the station is here. And that was yet another trap that is different, that is uh, well designed to make your make your passage through the level painful. Um, and we are approaching another puzzle. This bit here just went up and we have to get it down because, well, the game needs input from both of these, as you can, you can see, to open the door. But unfortunately, uh, well, to, to get this down, we have to enter this maze. Okay. Uh, we have two characters here, so we can... Uh... And when you come across a puzzle, it really is imperative for both characters to work together to figure it out. Exactly, and... Well, three, because you have Scarlet, you have Tibble, and you have yourself, that you still have to really, you know, crunch the numbers in your head and just think, oh, well, what should I do? Because if you just misclick something, then they, you'll just straight up kill them. Um, so, what should I do? Okay, I still remember something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And maybe this is the part of the game that... Um, new that is kind of, well... I really know the ins and outs of this level. Work. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, so, but what right now? This thing here. Uh. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you see that? Oh, and I, uh, well... Oof. Interesting, okay. So different traps and then figuring that out and ideally solve the puzzle. Ability to move on. Exactly. Okay, so we can move on here. She's got another reward box. Alright. And, oh, there's another loot box, but... Another ambush. Okay. Or, as I would say in the game, another ambush! <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. Well, 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 who do we have here? It's, um, it's... Oh, okay, just three of those guys. Mm hmm. Let's make them take care of themselves. Maybe. Gonna make things interesting. And and block block the line of fire to Scarlet so that he doesn't want to even do this. And oh yeah, whatever. That's gotta hurt. So once again we're fighting our way through the metro station as one of the many villains will come across. Those are the scum right there and they are in uh, fairly high numbers when they show up. Well, you know, but still, <laughs> according to this game mathematics, they are still outnumbered. 
by us. And we got a <laughs> quick question here from the, the live chat saying, how far into the game is this current part that you're showing us? Are we allowed to talk about it? Well, I think we pretty much already said this is the, the metro station. This is, quote, episode four. So if you're if you're checking out Homicidal All-Stars for the first time uh, while you play Match, hey, I'll give a pretty good description here. This is a television show inside of a video game. You are playing as a character who is fighting for survival in the deadliest game show in history. So picture Hunger Games at this crazy level. People all over the world are watching you try to survive. This entire dystopian universe is a complete disaster. This entire game show was set up by a company called Omega Corporation and Orion Ford, who is the CEO, the owner, basically Mr. Evil at will. So you are trying to survive everything here while everybody is watching you live on television. That's why you might see fans who want your autograph because you're essentially like their favorite professional athlete as you fight your way through this. So we're in the Metro station. I hope that answers your question. There's different episodes or levels throughout the game that you have to survive your way through in order to get to the end. And Metro station being one. Defensively for now. Not even wow. close. And he well, sets himself up for a kill shot. Yeah. Setting the enemies up just to attack themselves is great, but while those enemies suck at shooting, then you do what you gotta do. So <laughs> we still have to kill both of those guys. I really hope that this one would be a little bit better at shooting. Um, so I have to take care of him myself, right. which, I, which I will do. Oh, I don't have enough. Quite. Yep. Question, how far does the demo go? Is it the first two episodes? The demo available at, on Steam, it's um, it's actually one tactical level. So, gotcha. okay. uh, yeah, I, unfortunately, you won't see any exploration in the demo. Um, so that's so you why go. you should really, you know, watch out and uh, look forward to those streams that we do so we can get yep. a glimpse of the game. <laughs> yep. Mm, and let's kill so the guy. Little Lev in chat, that explains it. The demo is one tactical level, so you can't actually uh, go this far with the demo. That's why during these live streams, we like to show you the visuals of other levels that you're going to get to, because it makes it that much more fun. There's a close-up Tybalt with a boot to the Ronin. And uh, I don't know if you can hear this, but you can... Uh... Oh, no. Maybe you could hear the the, the crowd ch chanting, uh, "Finish him! Finish him!" Oh, that was great. Unfortunately, I can't hear uh, I can't hear anything from the actual game, but I'm picturing it in my brain. Okay, well, that's that that should be enough. And let's just you know, go with a splash. Yeah, I do remember screaming "Finish him!" many times uh, during the recording phase, though, in different voices. Oh, and another close up and good night. Hey, make it through. They're not going down easy. Great. And well, I think that's let's call it a night. Uh, that was really great talking to you. That was really great uh, playing this part of the game. And well, um, I'm really uh, thankful that I got uh, a chance to show you the cooperational puzzles. I hope that you like them. And wish list the game. Like absolutely for wish list. We do have a couple other questions though. Can we oh, run through those real quick? Of course, we can. Here we go. We got one question here. How do the competitions work in terms of leaderboards, and will there be any prize money? Uh, how do the competitions work in terms of leaderboards, and will there be any prize money? Like in terms of the uh, in the in-game world, or then well, I guess so. That's the question. I think so. The leaderboards is that there is one undefeated leader, which is uh, your target that you have to get to, and uh, you have to defeat him. Which is kind of, you. well, this this explains your question as in for the leaderboard. There is no leaderboard in the game that you follow and you play against artificial and not existent uh, enemies. Everything you see is presented to you in the form of a cinematic or, or a cutscene that explains to you who is who and who does what. There's no artificial leaderboards that you chase after. And there's this, there was the second part of the question. 
how do you is there prize money well the prize right. money is in the ratings and the battle highlights here and in the rewards that you sure. got from all the tactical levels and loot boxes well plus as a character <laughs> the further you go in the game the more fame you get so that's another added bonus to it exactly and you get to unlock perks and uh, that grants you specific abilities and whatnot yeah uh th here's a fun question i swear it's not for me but the question is will the player character ever have a chance to meet the commentator in person <laughs> uh, yeah oh i think okay. I didn't yeah know. yeah if, if i if i recall correctly yes uh, I hope so. I, I hope not on mine, really. <laughs> uh, no matter what, you hear plenty of me throughout the game, so it's okay. Uh, next question. What is your favorite puzzle or trap out of the ones you design? Uh, I think the laser. Because it's um, it gives uh, this kind of depth uh, that you can design things with. Just you, just like you could saw. It's, uh, just, sorry, just like you could see, the, the, the laser is stopped by the column, so you get to... Uh, really play with this 3D space design that you have laser pointing from here, shooting here, and you can move the column and it goes straight forward after, you know, uh, because the column is down and you, you can obstruct it and this is great. So, yeah, that's the, that's the trap that I love the most. And actually, it really, it was this coincidence that I designed it and implemented it because I was responsible for the first version of it. Like, really in a game working and you could play with that and I was working on this uh, this laser shooting head that is in the old quarter level and I just you know did this pointer shooter that 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 points at you and shoots and then I thought well maybe that can be a laser why not and that's that's how the laser exists in the game fantastic <laughs> uh, we have a fun comment here uh, I believe it's Euro. Uh, already saved up the 60 Euro, maybe, in case it will be that expensive, question mark. 60 Euro? Oh, I don't know. I, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think it's two, well, uh, unless you want to buy two copies of the game, then <laughs> you, you're safely covered there. This uh, 30 Euros, I think it's, it should be enough. But, it, well, it's not my kind of decision, so... We'll yeah, see. and then uh, another question, which we you know we cover, but it can't hurt to say one more time: uh, When is the release date? From what I understand, uh, the official release date hasn't been announced yet. Is it that hasn't correct? been disclosed yet, and unfortunately, I cannot answer that question. Right. So, if people want to find anything Homicidal All Stars, if you Google Homicidal All Stars, it'll show up on Facebook, it'll show up on Twitter, uh, anywhere else that you'd recommend uh, recommend people going to. Um, Steam page, wish list. <laughs> uh, or GOG, you know, good old games, and YouTube just... Not to mention, you know, re real simple, homicidalallstars.com. It's a website. It exists. Yeah, it's it there. exists. And there you can find all the, you know, essential links that get you whatever we want you to get. So check out that page too, yeah. That's a uh, good catch. Oh, I love this question here. If you could make sure some kind of extra media for this game came out what would it be i.e a ah. comic book or a web series like what so let's say the game you know it's a hit which it's gonna be what would be the a fun creative next step from my perspective maybe a board game because mm. uh uh if you you know uh if you have seen the the commercial that you know there's a, there are those those toys that really got me thinking that this is a perfect setup for toys and when you get toys you get pawns and then I thought maybe yeah maybe a board game uh, and if, well for a board game you get dice you can roll the dice and you get grids you can shoot other characters with it I think it's perfect wait well <laughs> uh, or if I were to choose something else, then maybe, well, I don't know, animated series. It's just because I... I was going to say, anima it. animated series would be incredible. I mean, the, the characters are so in detail. You yeah, know? yeah. That, they are just, you know, so exaggerated that it would, it would be really fun to watch that. Sure would. Well, that, uh, what's... Oh, wait a minute. Since Mr. Stern already sounds confident it will be a hit, and I really hope it does... Are there plans for 
post-game content? Yeah, we pretty much already covered that question already. So, yeah, I mean, are there plans? I mean, I think it's really one step at a time, right? You can't jump too far, get the cart in front of the horses, I guess the phrase there. Yeah, but I think there is something that, at least what I can say is that you can expect something that I'm not going to, we're not going to leave you barehanded after the release. Very exciting. Cannot wait. Uh, well, Maciej, this has been such a fun stream today. A lot of activity in the live chat, which we always appreciate. And of course, everyone watching this, you can go back and watch previous streams if you want to see different parts of the game. And uh, most importantly, homicidalallstars.com. Find it on Facebook. Find it on Twitter. This truly is an amazing family of brilliantly creative people that put this game together. And the more support we get from you, the better this game is going to do and the more success it's going to have. So, Matche, any closing uh, any closing thoughts? Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for watching, really. And I yeah. I hope that you will be having as, as much fun with the game as I had with creating it and with playing it right now. Absolutely. I cannot wait. Remember, the demo is still live on Steam. So you can check it out. So find Homicidal All-Stars on Steam, homicidalallstars.com. And up until the release date, we're going to keep doing these live Twitch streams just about weekly. So make sure you follow this Good Shepherd Entertainment Twitch page and follow all things Homicidal All-Stars. And make sure you hit the tag so you can get all the updates possible. So for Matt J. Krasinski and the entire Artificer Games team, I am Joe Stern, a.k.a. Johnny LaQuasto. We will see you next time on Homicidal All-Stars. Thank you. The arena is quiet for now. What contestants Marty and Scarlet could be walking into an ambush. Oh, shit. What's an ambush? <laughs> They're surrounded. Wakey, wakey. Let's rock. Surprise, motherfucker! Oh, you want some too? I got plenty. Now that's using your head. Hasta la vista, baby. Huh? Mm, baby. And that's no way to treat a lady. No mercy on Homicidal All-Stars! But wait, who's that entering the arena? It's Ulysses, the reigning champion! Let's heat things up. <laughs>